When introducing regular expressions, I've claimed that they define the same set of languages as the finite automata. And so far, I've proven how to construct a finite automaton from a given regular expression. In this video, we'll have a first look at the other way around, how to actually derive a regular expression from a given non-deterministic finite automaton. And what we are going to prove here is, in fact, the second half of the so-called Kleene theorem. And the second half is here that for every non-deterministic finite automaton A, we can find a regular expression E that defines the same language as the uh, accepted by the automaton. In this video, we'll first start with the informal idea, how this can actually work, and I'll give the formal algorithm in a further video. The general idea is that at first we make an assumption, and the assumption is that we have one initial and one accepting state only. And if we have this, then we start by eliminating states one by one. We eliminate all the states that are neither the initial state nor the accepting state. And in this case, it's only this state here that's neither the initial nor the accepting state. And we eliminate the state and instead we allow um, not only single letters at the transition, but also regular expressions. So when we eliminate this state here, we can just remove it and say instead of taking an A and an arbitrary number of Bs to stay here and another A to go back to the initial state, we can also just take a word from A, B star A. The idea being that this regular expression here defines all the words that would lead us via this removed state from this state to the initial state. So we remove this state and add a new transition back to the initial state and annotate it with this regular expression. And this regular expression defines all the words that could be used to actually go from here to here in the original automaton. So we have removed this state here and we end up with this automaton. And this automaton has only two states, one is initial and one is accepting. And from this, and they, they are different, and from this we can directly derive the regular expression for the language. It is as follows. First thing to get from the initial state q0 to q0, we can read a b. But we can also take this little detour, taking the a, then taking the b, and going back via a b star a. So to get from q0 to q0, this can be done by all the words here. We can either have a b or we can have an a followed by an arbitrary number of b's, this one here, and then we can have an a b star a, which is defined here. So that's the set of words that would lead us from q0 back to q0. But actually, we don't want to get to Q0, we want to get to Q1. So how do we get to Q1, starting from Q0? At first, starting from Q0, we can go back to Q0. And from Q0 to Q0, uh, uh, we can get by all the words defined by this first part here, by the B plus A B star A B star A, defining all the words that would lead us from Q0 back to Q0. And we can do this an arbitrary amount of times. So this whole expression gets a star we can, because we can just go from Q0 back to Q0 via this B and back to Q0 and can be an arbitrary number of times we can do this. But at some point we have to decide that we want to go to Q1 and stay there and not go back to Q0. So we have to take the A, which is here, and afterwards we can have an arbitrary number of b's to stay in q0. So the regular expression is actually derived by taking the regular expression that would lead us from q0 back to q0. This can be done arbitrary number of times, so it gets a star. Then we take the um, 
transition that would lead us from Q0 to Q1, and then we take all the transitions that would lead us from Q1 to Q1 without changing state. And so we end up with this regular expression for the language accepted by this automaton. Here the idea is, as, uh, as indicated here, that we have the assumption that we only have one initial state and one accepting state, and that we successively eliminate the uh, states that are neither the initial nor the accepting state until we end up with these two, and then we obtain the regular expression from the result directly. However, we can also have the case in which the initial state and the accepting state coincide. So it's quite a similar language. The only difference is that in this case, Q0 is initial and accepting. And actually it's quite, quite easy to see uh, what regular expression it could be because we, we just uh, switch state using uh, each A. So uh, if we have one A, we change state, another A, change state and third A. So actually what we do is we count the number of A's modulo three and the amount of B's doesn't matter. Now for the, uh, for the algorithm, what, what can we do? We do state elimination again. And the first state that we eliminate is again Q2. We eliminate Q2 and we remove the, uh, the state at a new transition from Q1 to Q0 and annotate it with A B star A. And then we have this automaton. And now initial state and final state coincide. So this state here can also be eliminated. It's neither initial nor final. And we eliminate this state as well. To go from Q0 back to Q0 via Q1, we can take the A, an arbitrary number of Bs, and back by A, B star A. And that's the regular expression we get here when we eliminate the state. We get A to go to a Q1, the B star to take this loop here, and then the A, B star A to go back to Q0. Now we have Q0 with two uh, transitions and we can just combine them into one tr uh, transition by using the union. And from this automaton, from the result, we can directly um, derive the regular expression. We have one initial state and we have one transition labeled with this uh, expression here. And we can take this uh, transition an arbitrary number of times. So we just take this expression here, which is b, b or a, b star, a, b star, a, and we star it with the gleaming star because we can take this transition arbitrarily often. And that's actually the uh, regular expression for the uh, language defined and accepted by this automaton. We don't care about the b's and the number of a's must be a multiple of three. That's what we already saw in the beginning. And that's actually the result we obtain here as well. That was the informal idea so far for this algorithm. The details, we'll have a closer look in a follow-up video.